In this video, I'm gonna show you how to get 100% accurate Facebook ads data. Yes, it really is possible, and there's a couple of different ways to do it. I'm also going to share a Facebook ads conspiracy theory that might help explain some of the weird stuff that's been happening to do with Facebook ads over the past 12 months or so, so make sure you stick around for that. Now, we all know that since the iOS 14 release last year, Facebook ads data has been much less accurate. We can't see exactly how many leads and sales our campaigns are generating. That makes it much more difficult for us to work out how profitable our campaigns are or aren't. It makes it much more difficult for us to be able to optimize our campaigns because we can't exactly see which elements are performing best. And that lack of data also affects Facebook's machine learning process. If they have, if Meta has less data with which to optimize our campaigns, then results can drop off and some advertisers have seen a drop off in results because of iOS 14 and the drop off in data that's coming through. But you can get 100% accurate Facebook ads data in a post iOS 14 Facebook ads world. In fact, there's a couple of different ways to do it. There's a low effort way and a high effort way. The low effort way requires a bit of setup at the beginning, but then you can just operate as usual. The high effort way requires more uh, manual involvement on your part. I'm gonna explain both and you can decide which one you may want to use. So the low effort way is to transition all your Facebook and Instagram ad campaigns into in-app campaigns. So instead of sending people to an external location like your website, which is where the data gets lost, we can keep people in app and get 100% accurate data. All that data can be tracked. Now there's two main ways to do that, depends on your business and what it is that you offer. The first is to use lead generation campaigns, instant forms. And if I jump over to an example ad account, just to quickly demonstrate this, if we click on the green plus create button, if you've got the new ODAX menu like I have here, if you select leads, click continue and then jump over to the ad set level, you can see that the default is now instant forms. And that's what we're referring to when we say lead generation. It used to be a separate campaign objective called the lead generation campaign objective. And you may still have the old campaign objective menu, in which case you want to use that and you'll see the same thing. If you've got the new ODAX menu, then you want to select leads and then instant forms, which is interestingly enough, the default. If you're not familiar with this type of campaign, instead of someone being sent through to your website to become a lead there and inquire, say, via a contact form. They are presented with a form inside of Facebook or Instagram, and they're able to enter in their details there and go on and become a lead very easily within app. And like most alternative ways of doing things to do with Facebook ads, there are pros and cons to using instant forms as opposed to traditional lead campaigns via your website. Firstly, big pro, the leads tend to be a lot cheaper, okay? So it's easier for people to stay in app, submit their information, because of that, there's less friction. People are more likely to take that action. The lead cost is less. We do sometimes find that the quality on the other hand is not as good uh, because it's easier, less friction. You don't filter out as many of the people that aren't that interested. So you might find that when you go ahead to contact, try and contact those leads, less people respond and you have a harder time converting those people. That's the trade-off. Now Meta is working really hard and they recently announced that they're bringing in new tools for us to be able to easily filter leads that come through via instant forms so that we don't have to waste a lot of time trying to contact leads that aren't that interested. So I think this is something that's going to improve over time, but that's the sort of major pro versus con of using instant forms lead generation as opposed to traditional lead campaigns. And if you are using Facebook and Instagram ad campaigns to generate leads, I'd strongly encourage you to test this. We'd always recommend you test leads generated via your website against an instant form lead generation setup. You may find that one works much better than the other, and particularly when you factor in the 100% accurate data that you will get via your instant forms, as opposed to the maybe 70% or so accurate data that you're going to get via your website, you may well find that overall, this approach works best. The other main way to transition your Facebook and Instagram ad campaigns to in-app destinations is to use a Facebook shop. This is gonna be particularly applicable for anyone that's looking to sell products, any e-commerce businesses, you can use a Facebook shop, keep people within the meta family of apps, Facebook, Instagram, etc., And that's gonna give you much, much more accurate data because I've already said, Facebook can track all that stuff that goes on in app. It's when people go to external locations that we see that data drop off. Now, there are of course some pros and cons associated with transitioning to a Facebook shop as opposed to using another external platform like Shopify, for example. At the time of recording, there's less features, less um, tools that you can use with a Facebook shop than you can with something like Shopify. And that may be a big issue for your business depending on what you use and how advanced your store is and what you're using to set things up and to optimize performance and all that sort of stuff. So that is a con associated with this. On the pro side, Facebook shops, again, reduce friction. It's quite similar to lead generation campaigns. And as things improve over time, we may find that 
users, people on Facebook and Instagram, your potential customers, quite like the experience of just being kept on platform, nice and easy for them to take an action and that sort of thing. Again, it's something that Meta's working really hard to improve because they want people to be using Facebook shops as much as possible. Um, but just like with the lead generation campaigns, this is something I'd recommend testing. It does take a bit of time to get set up, but if this does work better for you, especially factoring in the more accurate data, it may well be a great way to go. Um, doesn't mean you need to completely get rid of, say, your Shopify store or something like that, but you could keep that and also test using a Facebook shop and sending people directly there and see how it performs. That's the best way to find out the best approach and the accurate data may well be worth it. So at the beginning of this video, I mentioned that I'm gonna share a Facebook ads conspiracy theory with you, and here it is. A lot of people think that Facebook, now Meta, didn't really mind the iOS 14 update. That's something that Apple decided to do and Facebook made some noise around this is bad for small business owners, etc., etc. but they didn't really take proper action to stop it from happening. And the reason why is because they actually don't mind. They quite like the outcome that this might make advertisers do, the action that it might make them take, which is to transition their Facebook and Instagram ad campaigns to in-app destinations. Facebook have wanted us to use lead generation campaigns as opposed to sending people to a website to generate leads for a long time. They want to keep people in app. Same applies to Facebook shops. That benefits the platform overall. The more time that everyone, including your users, where you're sending them from when they click, spends in app, the better it is for Facebook. And it's easy to forget that Facebook, now Meta, had a really big bargaining chip to use here if they wanted to when it came to the, the iOS 14 update. You might think, well, there's nothing they could have done. These apps are on iPhones, Apple is in charge of that in the App Store, what could they have done? Facebook could have threatened to remove the Facebook, Instagram, and WhatsApp apps from the App Store. That would have been devastating for Apple. That would have undoubtedly resulted in a big drop in iPhone sales, because if you couldn't get access to Facebook, Instagram, or WhatsApp, a lot of people would buy an Android device instead. Um, Facebook could have played that card. They could have threatened to do that, and they didn't. And the theory is, that Facebook, whilst making some noise that they didn't like this, actually is kind of happy about it because it's gonna force people to do what they've wanted all along, and that's advertise in a way that keeps people in Facebook, in Instagram, and spend as much time as there as possible. There is also evidence to suggest that Facebook will charge you a lower CPM if you advertise in a way that keeps people in app. Now we might expect, for example, you to generate a lower cost per lead via instant forms as opposed to sending them to your website because there's less friction and things I already mentioned. But a lower CPM means that Facebook is actually charging you less as an advertiser to advertise using an instant form as opposed to advertising to people that are going to your website. Now we don't know that conclusively, but it does seem to be the case and that would further confirm or help confirm what we talked about in that Facebook really wants to incentivize advertisers to keep the people they're advertising to within Facebook, Instagram, the, the meta suite of apps. Okay, so what is the high effort way when it comes to generating 100% accurate Facebook ads data? And that's to create unique landing pages for your Facebook ads, Instagram ads, and you can get as specific as you want. You could have unique landing pages for different campaigns, unique landing pages for different ad sets, even unique landing pages for different ads, depending on how much time and effort you want to dedicate to this. Now, I'm not talking about a complete redesign of your landing page for each element. We're talking here about unique URLs. What that means is that you can then track exactly where people start on your website and where they go through using Google Analytics. And you can see, okay, the people that went through to this page um, converted at this percentage, the people went through to this page converted that percentage. We know that this page corresponds to that ad set, this page corresponds to that ad. And you can use that to work out exactly which elements within your Facebook and Instagram ad campaigns are delivering the best results and then optimize those accordingly. Now, the downside to this approach is that that 100% accurate data that you can track and monitor yourself won't be fed back into your Facebook ad account. So Facebook's machine learning process won't be able to optimize as well as the low effort way where you just keep everyone um, in app. So whilst you might be able to optimize better, the machine learning process will just operate in exactly the same way as it does with, with probably what you've got going on right now where you're sending people to your website, generating leads and sales that way with about roughly 70% accurate data. The main advantage to this high effort approach is that you can keep using your website. And if that's really important to your business, which I know it absolutely is to tons of Facebook advertisers, then that might be worth taking the time and effort to get this set up. Now, I can imagine some of you are watching this thinking, why not just use UTMs? Why go to the trouble of creating whole unique landing pages. We tested this a whole bunch, they're just not as accurate. If you really want, if accuracy is super, super important to you, the unique landing pages 
is the best bet if you're sending people to your website. So which option should you choose? The low effort way, the high effort way, maybe neither. I think it really depends on how important it is that you send people to your website. For some businesses, that's absolutely essential, in which case you know what to do. For, for others, it's not, and it may be easier just to keep people in app. You may also decide that you don't want to go with either of these options. You'd rather just keep doing things as you are, accept the fact that your data isn't quite as accurate and optimize accordingly. That might be the best option for your business. We certainly run many campaigns under that setup. So don't feel like you have to do one of these, but if you really feel the lack of data and the, and the inaccuracies in there are costing you and costing you in terms of Facebook ad campaign performance a lot, it may well be worth at least testing one or both of these options. You can always make a decision once you run a few experiments over the next few weeks, months, and that might make a huge difference to the long-term success of your Facebook and Instagram advertising. I also wanna quickly mention our Facebook and Instagram advertising services. My company, Lead Guru, is a specialist Facebook and Instagram ads agency. We create, manage, and optimize campaigns for our clients. If you want to find out more information, you can book a call with one of my team members. There's a link in the video description below. You just click on that, you go through to a page on our website, and you can book a slot directly directly into our calendar. Um, no obligation, we can just find out more about your business. We've probably worked with a business similar to yours in the past. You can find out how we work and hopefully we get a chance to, uh, to work together. We do have a 3K per month minimum budget requirement, so please only book a call if you meet that criteria. But um, if you do, go ahead and book a call. Hopefully we get a chance to work together. Now, if you've never created a lead generation campaign before and want to give it a go based on what we've covered in this video, something I would strongly recommend, I've created a step-by-step -step video tutorial on it right here. In that video, I show you exactly how to create lead generation campaigns that generate a ton of very inexpensive leads, go ahead and check it out.